Hi folks, how are we doing? Uh, another scorching night here at uh, Ralston Rover Repair. I'm out in the uh, the shed of doom, as we all know it. I'm trying to get myself motivated in this scorching heat, this 29 degree heat, to do a tow bar here on the Rover Commerce van. Um, it's the one thing I really, really want to fit. I've managed to source all the bits that I want to use for fitting the tow bar. Um, now, obviously, I'm going to run into a bit of an issue here myself when it comes to wiring. Yes, I know it's not a particularly difficult job to do, but being colorblind, it is, it's a bit of a nightmare to be honest. Now, I have all the bits and pieces, I have relays and buzzers and all that sort of stuff, but for now what I'm just going to do is I'm going to do the physical mounting of it. Um, bumper on, bumper up, sorry, bumper off, bumper on, uh, feed it all through, and then I've also decided when it's off to do new tail light gaskets because there is a little bit of water filling up in the spare wheel well it does seem to be coming from the tail light gaskets which is as everyone knows when it comes to set hours and 25s and 200s and all pretty common thankfully it's not much this should be enough to sort it out so that is the plan um I don't think we're going to be getting too much else done so if you're not really interested in tow bars this probably isn't going to be a video for you <laughs> but if you want to see how a tow bar is fitted to a 25 then this is going to be the video for you um it's thoroughly exciting i know calm down it's just it's this heat man it's this heat it's like you know why can you bother and before anyone asks i know i'm wearing a hat in the heat but whenever you have long girls hair and you're scrawling around the ground having a hat is the best thing you can have because it saves you catching your hair on things um, anyone with long hair that works on the ground knows the score. Anyone who's never had long hair and works on the ground, just shut up. You don't know what you're talking about. So, yes, that's that's the plan here today. A um, bit of a casual video. We'll take you around the van before we're done as well um, and show you everything that's been updated on. We're still waiting on the logbook from the DVLA. That's going into week five now. Which I'm not really surprised by, honest. Um, the last car I imported in February was an MGZ T190, and that took nearly nine weeks to get the logbook. Now, that was still at the tail end of the uh, unspecified global virus pandemic, because uh, you're not allowed to say that word on YouTube, um, or else you instantly get demonetized, which some of you may have seen on the videos. We are now monetized, which is great. Um, they make the tiniest amount of money, but still, you know, for all the views I get, it's going to add up over the years. And because of that, I'm hoping that we see it pretty soon. Um, have a number plate sitting ready for the van, ready to go. A uh, nice, a good number plate. Uh, I think that you'll get a giggle out of it. And as long as the DVLA doesn't have any problems with um, registering it, it's proven to be a bit, a bit problematic. A um, bit of an odd one. Because the Commerce was the 84 PS version compared to the uh, MG Express, which is the 105 or 104 PS, whatever you want, um, they initially bounced back to me. So what I did was I included copies of the VIN and the sticker of the vehicle and things like that and some extra photographs and all showing what it was and having to show them the differences in the throttle and all this sort of stuff, which shows what it is a uh, 84 PS versus a 105 PS. Now, for anyone that doesn't know, in 05 Rover simplified this very, very easily. And once the car's registered in the UK, I am going to take away the throttle restriction and make it 105 brake. It's same ECU, everything all is identical. The car just has a limited throttle uh, opening, so you lose about 20 brake. A lot of power there. Um, that's basic. That's better than a remap. You know, it's a fr free twenty break. Thankfully, um, the joys with Adrian Flux that um, I have all, all my mods that I haven't done to the car yet declared. So that's a you know that's why I'm wanting to get the tow bar on. I'm wanting to get that sorted out. So once I have my number plate, I can say right off we go and enjoy the car. So yes, um, let's get into this. Uh, it'll be pretty casual. Just. Anyone who's never taken a Rover 25 bumper off before, it's quite simple. Um, but I'm sure no one my luck there'll be rusted bolts or other problems. But hey, let's get into it and see what happens. So, first things first, um, this is going to be the tow bar that we're going to be fitting. Now, it's already 
pre-fitted to another vehicle. It's used and I have all the bolts associated with it and all the brackets, etc. Um, now, this was me. I did this. I cut the wire off because I'm going to be using a new socket. I'm going to be using a new hitch, which I'll show you now. Which people will be wondering, why am I doing this? But this is... Um, I prefer this style of hitch on a car. It's something I've had in my Freelander before. New sockets, new brackets, etc, etc, and various relays and all, which will get done at a later date. But for now, we're just going to be fitting and routing the wiring, etc, etc. So, what's the plan here? Well, I've got to get the bumper off. Now, it's not overly complicated, but again, like I say, there's definitely water getting in one of these two. Um, and the spare wheel well is definitely getting wet. That's right, sorry, I forgot on the... No, there's not much water in there now, because I've dried it out before I started this video. But there was quite a bit the other day. Um, so, that's something I want to sort out. But yes, um, if anyone's ever wondered how to do this, first things you thirst. Take off your tail light, which is three 10 mils on the inside. So you do that on both sides. Then, whenever you're in there, there's a 10 mil bolt there. Nice and simple. And then it's just what's in the arches and underneath the bottom there. So I'm going to get this done quickly, and I'll do you some update whenever I have the tail lights off so you can see the bolt that I'm talking about. And then I'll go as we're going along, just do wee bits and stages so that it's a nice quick one. Um, and then I'll do you updates about all the other stuff that needed sorted on the car and where we are now. I just thought I'd interject here very, very quickly. These are the old seals. Now, pretty good to be honest. Actually, I was kind of hoping they weren't so bad, but you saw me just ripping off a piece of wood there. It was right there. <laughs> and I've traced the leak. Sure enough, it was just this ganky bit of wood. So I'd say that somebody at some stage has had the tail lights off to uh, maybe change a bulb or whatever but they're they're a bit dirty in there so before I put everything back together I'm going to clean that area off so that the new gaskets have a better contact surface from the point of view of you know working effectively and this is going to sound like a strange one to say I'm zooming out for this one a lot of people who've maybe never seen a Commerce before, um, Commerce has different panels, obviously, because of the van. But it has these nice, very, very quick and handy and easy removable panels for getting in the side here and um, for accessing wiring and bits and pieces. So it makes it very, very easy if you're doing stuff, as you can see. And um, for me, it means that I don't have to do a lot of messing around whenever I'm, I'm actually going to just put this wiring in basically and get it sorted at a later date so yeah that's where we're at with this um nice little handy thing to see that that was just something simple causing the leak and it wasn't anything more dramatic or urgent throughout the vehicle it's nice to get a win for once although now i've said that this is probably going to bite me in the ass doing the rest of the car all righty so 10 minutes later we have the rear bumper off now i just noticed when i had the rear bumper off that the um Number plate lights are not the best, so I'm going to give them a wee clean up before we reinstall. Uh, maybe put some LED bulbs in there as well, just to improve things. Um, not too worried about the number plate being seen, but still nonetheless. So here we are, like I said. So that's your three 8 mils, not 10 mils. Actually, it was shows you the last time I took off a 25 bumper. It's been a while. Um, then we had 10 mil there. And our 10 mil just in the back of the oh, tell that right there. And um, what was the other 10 mil? Oh, yes, down here. Would you ever fuck up? Um, <laughs> so, just when I'm here, I'm gonna have a wee check over the vehicle underneath as well. Um, with this being a Mark II, it has the loom for the number plate lights. So, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the toe socket loom through there now we're, i'm just going seven pin keeping things simple this is a light duty vehicle so i'll never be towing anything of significant weight with it anyway um that's the plan but now 
get this fitted to the rear end. It's nothing too crazy. As you can just take a look at it, you can see where the various bits and pieces need to come out and get fitted. Um, but yes, we'll take everything apart and put it on bit at a time. Now, I know this is pre-assembled, but I do want to take my time on this. So forgive me that the next time you see this, it's going to be on there. And I'm also going to do a wee bit of tidying up underneath where the uh, spare wheel well is. Not that it's rusty or anything, but just I've got the perfect opportunity to do it. But it has made me think it's maybe not going to be a million miles off time for an exhaust. Um, I've been thinking about doing a wee exhaust in this car anyway. Nothing too fancy or racy, but still. It's maybe worth thinking about doing it now, getting out of the way. Especially if I'm thinking LPG in the future. But anyway, that's where we are with that. Um, boot full of bits and the wonderful SAS lubricant that I find hard to beat um, yet again the old classic screws here into the corner absolutely rusted solid so they'll have to get cleaned up and copper greased and all before we go back in but yeah um, relatively simple install as you can see Goes in the sides, a couple of bolts, and it attaches to the toe and eye at the bottom. So get this on, but I'm going to strip this down first of all before I put this on and get rid of these bits. Obviously, as we're taking off the, uh, the rear catch cans, um, I thought people were curious to see. Yes, obviously, that is where they're supposed to sit from, well, supposed to sit like that actually from factory. But you can see there's quite a lot of protective wax and sealant there. Uh, along with the two plug holes um, and on this side you really can see that Rover really did actually try to put a bit of wax and protective around the holes there to stop the vehicle rusting so that is kind of bare which I'm not too happy about so I'm going to shoot these over with some uh, red oxide and then some black paint let this dry and then we'll get back to fitting the rest of the tow bar once I have this side removed. Here we are, it's been about an hour between um, coats. And as you can see, the grass and bits and shade have managed to find their way here already. So we tidied up the back end quite a bit. Um, iron oxide, everything with red. And then got the hole underneath there. Just well, without jacking it all up, we'll do the rest at a later date. Tidied up and painted so there's a good, you know, all this bits that are behind the bumper are invisible. Uh, the wee, the wee shelf there, as I call it, that the um, screw rivets go into, that was a wee bit rusty, so I did a bit of rust conversion on that, tidied that up as well. Um, it's still a bit tacky to actually use yet. I don't want to just start banging things on just quite yet. So, gonna get the next stage of. I'm actually gonna disassemble this completely, um, and then have this all bit more cleaned up because it's still a bit gangy and um, a bit more cleaned up and I want to tidy the ends of those bolts just tidy the ends of the threads and then we'll get this smashed on um, the only thing is unfortunately it looks like I'm gonna have to cut a hole in the bumper had a feeling that was gonna happen anyway but what I might just try here for now is because it's got a raised hitch see if we can get away with it I know this came off another 25 and it had a big whack cut of it be honest it doesn't bother me it's black it'll do um it's barely going to be noticeable anyway if it was a monogram or something like that i would maybe worry about it a bit more but that's where we are at this stage and give us another half an hour 40 minutes to dry um i think that makes a big difference bit of extra protection for the vehicle going forward and do you know what i'm, I'm almost tempted because with time this evening throw a fourth coat on it and just say that that's all done it'll be the paint will probably outlive the life of the car but um mm -hmm. as anyone who knows me knows that uh, oh i love a tin of black paint <sighs> oh get the rattle cans out um a bit famous for it to say the least but yeah it's it's come along all right it's not too bad it's it's a i like 25s I like. I think I like 25s more than I like 45s. Although I like driving 45s and 25s about the same. There's something very genuine about a 25 and a 200. Um, with my first Rover being a wee silver 200 1.4, many many years ago, nearly two decades ago, the wee they hold a special place for me. There's something about them, and um, 
curiously enough, what I found is I always used to find it in 25s, 200s, etc. I used to have to sit slightly offset the pedal, but I don't know what the difference is on the seats in this that I don't have to. Maybe it's just because I'm so fat now that I just blend into the whole seat no matter what I do. <sighs> Food for thought, quite literally. Had to make a very, very, um, it's a nice cut. It got there in the end, but it was a bit of a dodgy one to say the least. Um, probably the dodgiest thing I've ever done in my life. My um, rotary tool decided it wanted to shit itself mid cut. Good on you. It's not the brand's fault. Um, it's it was actually the uh, the heads. All the heads just just shit themselves. They were my fault for buying cheap cheap quality discs. So I had none left. Um, so I had to bust out my angle grinder, and my brand new angle grinder didn't come with a spanner to tighten it on, and I didn't have the appropriate size spitting thinner, thin spanner. Easy for me to say. So I just did the dodgiest thing on the fucking planet ever was I tightened it up the best I could by hand and cut it by fucking with a very, very low rum, rum, rum um, cut. But the end results turned out pretty good, um, despite the fact living in absolute fucking fear using an angle grinder um, in the completely most dangerous way possible. But, you know, hey, sure, we'll not worry about that. Health and safety here at Robson Rover Repair out the fucking window. Um, so what's the plan now? Right. Get everything fitted, get the bumper back on, get the tow bar back on, and then we are done. Thank God. Well, the head torch is out, so that should tell you everything. <sighs> when the sun has gone down in the middle of July, and I'm whipping out the head torch, that means that it's very, very late at night. Now, it's after 11, and thankfully everything's done. But you just won't see it because it's pitch black, the car is black, etc. 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 So I'm gonna carry on this video um tomorrow. So you're gonna see things change a little bit. But I like to do the continuity of these videos and I can go into it in more detail, but nonetheless. Um hard for you to see anything at all there. That's where we are, and yes. <laughs> the sun really has gone down. Um, now I'm going to finish off, have something to eat, and dream about tow bars tonight. Yay! The next day. So, anyway, as precaution, I was working away in the little car, and we were doing final reassembly, and everything was put all back together. And I'm, I'm a bit paranoid about anything battery related. So even though I was only unplugging a set of taillights, I still had the negative battery uh, or of the cable disconnected. Fair enough. What could possibly go wrong there? So, all good. Um, tail lights back in, number of plate lights fitted back into the bumper, everything okay. And I put the battery on and I thought to myself, maybe I'll just check the lights here just in case. Put the key in the ignition and Turn it to position two so you can get all your access to your lights, etc. etc. Your accessory position, if you want to call it that. And all I smelled was burning. <laughs> um, the short result was four relays, 17 bulbs, and um, I lost count of fuses. Um, I don't know what the fuck happened. Pardon my French, there's no other word for it. Um, I did trace it down to what looks to be a bad earth at the rear left tail light. Um, so I replaced the wiring for that. I replaced it with a new earth clean day contact area. Put it back in and all seems to be good now, thankfully. Um, I've sat and checked the car over since and tried many, many variations of you know, trying, to, trying to actually trip the car out, putting massive load on it, etc. Um, everything's all good. Um, truthfully, I think it was just a bit of wiring that had burned out over time um, in that back left earth. And whenever it was going, because I was doing all the bulbs at once, you know, because it was just easier for me to put the car in reverse um, and then switch on all the lights so I can walk around. Because you know yourself, it's pretty easy to tell on a 25 what lights are working and what aren't. 
unlike a lot of modern cars, none of the bulbs are shared, you know, doing like double function or anything like that. Um, unlike a 75. Uh, so that all seemed good. Um, and then the, we had the, the, the big meltdown. Um, honestly, it was like, uh, it, I felt like I was in the China Syndrome. For anyone who's ever seen that movie, that scene where they're all freaking out. Graham. Okay, we're off the line. Disconnected from the grid. Ted, stabilize the reactor. Right. Radiation. And uh, it was just bizarre, but regardless, gave up, went to bed, got up early the next morning, and hit the car hard. Got all the. I'm thankful that I keep loads and loads of relays and fuses and things from various other project cars and things that I've pulled apart over the years. Um, I have a bit of a funny roll about that. I mean, how I literally have a box full of relays from the various Rover cars. And that's the of my biscuits here. So I was able to get the car all sorted and everything's all out good now. So shall we see what the end result is? And thankfully there's no car alarms going off now. Ta da Right, hold on while I get up here. Oh, Jesus. I really, I really need to build this seat. I've had this seat <laughs> and this for ages. And all I need to do is cut a bit of wood, but I just can't be arsed. That's disgraceful. Right. Um, all on, all good. So, let's see. Anything fancy needed to be done? No cable rooted under the bumper. <sighs> Through one of the pre-existing holes for wiring. All good. Um, it was, I've been posting this on Instagram as I go along. People have been asking. The main toolbar itself was a PCT variant. Uh, I'll zoom in there and you can, can you maybe see the... I'll read it out. RU41330281255. Doesn't seem to be focusing. Um, the... <laughs> Ball and pin setup is Maypole and the sockets Maypole as well. Um, although this part, I can't remember what manufacturer that was. Yes, overall, all done, all sorted. Still have to do the wiring into the boot. Um, I'm going to leave that to someone else. But very, very happy with the end result. Of course, it's overkill for a little 25. Um, wiring, actually, can I show you it quickly without... Disassemble the car. <coughs> Jesus. You just see it coming in just down there. And all the other bits and pieces sitting ready for it. Also, this has worked out quite nicely too because... As I, sorry, I'm a bit OCD. I like my carpet to look neat. That's what she said. Really, really glad I did the um, taillight seals as well. Because it was this taillight that was leaking. It was. Um, I found a tiny little stream coming just down the corner, slithering around there. So when I was at it, I had everything out there as well, cleaned and all. So I feel pretty good knowing that the hole underneath the back end of the car is cleaned and tidied up and painted and prepped and a bit of rust proofing, replacement seals, tow bars on, and <laughs> it does look ridiculous. I'm not even gonna lie. Um, that that that's got a bit of chunk to it. There's no doubt. But you know what? This is what I wanted. Um, people have asked why do I want this? Um, bear in mind, and I've also been asked like, does it rattle? Yes, it does. Although I'll be putting a bit of foam in there at some stage. Why do I want a bumper like that? Look at these chunks out of this. Uh, why do I want a tow bar like that? Honestly, um, I've I've never not had a vehicle without a tow bar at some stage. I think it's maybe a Northern Ireland thing. I just find it a very, very useful thing to have. And also from a towing point of view, it's just, if I ever have to tow someone out of a hedge or anything like that, again, you live in Northern Ireland, these things happen to you. But regardless, we're done. Um, and I do mean we are done on this little car. Bar, well, for now, bar until we get the LPG done on it. Um, there's maybe going to be a set of alloys goes on it, and that's it. This is going to be as completely standard as possible. Now, don't get me wrong, if I found a nice set of Mark II black front leather seats for a, a 25 three-door, 
they'd probably go into it. But then the door cards wouldn't match, and then you're modifying things, etc., etc. And I just want it to be what it is. A little sensible daily that's also a little bit rare. Um, some people would say it's rare looking. But I quite like them. So yes, um, I might even... Uh, 40th birthday's coming up, and I'm hoping to get a, a nice little DA polisher. So might even go as far as giving the wee car a polish. But that's that's it so far on this little video. Um, it's not exactly what you would call uh, a show-worthy car. It has things, it has marks. You know, but I think just with it being an oddity as a 25 van, and especially because I know a lot of them here in Northern Ireland are diesel. Diesel's a king when it comes to cars. That I just, I really like it. Um, there is one more thing I probably will do. Is the grill is looking a tad faded. Hello, pup. Um, the grill is looking a tad faded. Oh, yes, okay. Okay, my dogs are here to greet. My rovers are here to greet the rover community. Um, uh, this is looking a tad uh, rusted looking. So I'll see if I can sort something out about that. And then, of course, that badge looks shocking. But completely standard is the way forward, which is quite boring, I know. Um, one thing that'll probably get done over the winter time, I'll do a video on that, headlining has begun to separate. But it's not enough that it's of concern. Um, it's an identical component to a 25, so who knows, maybe I'll find a nice one somewhere and I'll throw it in the car. But yes, we are and believe me when I say I'm glad that we are done because that that was just a unexpected mess. I uh, really wasn't expecting that kind of an electrical problem. Bear in mind I wasn't even touching the electrics. And it just shows you how delicate older cars can be. And yet this is a vehicle without CAN bus, like a 75 that has CAN bus system. Um, I would say that that's possibly something to consider if you ever are considering buying a Rover 75, but we'll talk about that in the buyer's guide that I've been meaning to publish now for five months. Um, there's so much that has to be put into it, it's going to be a 10 part video, but still, folks, as always, thank you very much. Um, I thank you for taking the time to watch the video. I uh, want to thank everyone who was also taking part and buying the uh, charity air fresheners there. We raised a great financial amount there for the Rainbow Project here in Northern Ireland in Pride Month. Um, yet again, if you want to help sponsor the channel, we don't have Patreon or anything like that. It's purely through either you want to purchase something in the eBay shop. And if you want to purchase something in the eBay shop, that's great. Um, all that money goes towards things like holding on to the web domain, that kind of stuff. The cars themselves, I have to earn some money to actually be working on them, which is why if I'm unemployed, things slow down, videos slow down, and when I'm in full-time employment, the work comes along. So, again, as always, it would really, really help me if you can maybe make a comment on the video, if you could give a like. And if you're not subscribed, please do. Um, recently discovered on my algorithm there that 87% of people who are watching my videos are not subscribed which is crazy um, especially considering some of the views I've had recently I would really really hope that people would take the time to just click that little button and I would ask also that if you are a regular viewer of Robson Rover Repair if there's anything that you would particularly like to see done um, the next video is probably going to be my white 75 there. I'm getting ready to either... It's going to be MOT'd. And once it's MOT'd, the decision will be made of if it's going to be for sale. Or if it's going to be getting kept until its replacement is sorted out. Now, surely there's not another new car has arrived at Robson Rover Repair. Who knows? Who knows? But it's being sorted out and everything's being MOT'd before anything else gets decided. Plan, it looks like it's probably going to be the white car is going to get sold and out of the profits from the white car, I'm going to get my wee cabriolet back on the road for 2022 into 2023. And then we'll do a follow-up video of it being restored and MOT prepped. 
And then when it's done, it's going to be nice and simple. It's going to be ZTT, and yes, the ZTT is still here. It hasn't turned a wheel in 10 months. Don't want to get into it. Just a frustrating problem that I cannot get to the bottom of. Um, but it seems to be the current plan going forward. But because it's a car that's not sorted still, it's just something that is eating at me. It really, really is. Uh, speaking of ZTTs, I want to thank everyone also as well who has been sharing John's um, ZTT. Um, John's someone I've known through the Rover community for some time. And unfortunately, his yellow, trophy yellow ZTT diesel manual was stolen. Um, you've probably seen it shared in the various groups if you're in the various groups. And I would encourage you to keep your eyes open. It has been about two weeks now. Unfortunately, that means the car has probably disappeared. Um, it's sad and unfortunate, but Rover owners, I cannot say this enough. Lock your cars up, protect your cars, make sure everything's secure. Um, yes, it may seem like a pain in the ass coming out and running the car for 10, 15 minutes sometimes just to charge the battery. Do it. Um, you've seen I have a pair, a pile of spare batteries on my cars myself. Um, I keep them always with a fresh battery. I change them every month just so that I can turn around and say, hey, I know my vehicles are alarmed. Like the limo sits alarmed, the car under the cover sits alarmed, all that sort of stuff. We can't be too careful. People will try and take your stuff. So, right. That is it, that's us, that's this video. Um, this ending bit went on a bit longer than I thought it was going to. Um, but it just, there's been a lot going on. So as always folks, thank you very much. Thank you for going through another painful, enduring video. Um, wasn't what you would call thrilling, but whatever it is, it robs an over repair. Maybe we'll, we'll have a bit of fun in the next one. <laughs>